Thank you for tuning in to this financial modeling quick lesson. In this lesson, we're going to do three things. First, we're going to show you how to integrate scenarios into a financial model. And then we're going to build a drop down menu in Excel. We'll show you how to do that using the preferred way to do that from, from a financial modeling standpoint, and that's using data validation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect those scenarios in uh, with the drop down menu so that whenever someone who's using the model selects uh, one of the three scenarios, we're going to have a best case, base case, and a weak case scenario. Whenever one of those are selected, we're going to see how that affects the entire model. So connecting the drop down menu to the actual scenarios, and we're going to do that using one of the one of the more powerful function combinations in Excel, and that's the offset match function combination. Before we begin, I wanted to remind everyone that to get more detail and learn, get more in depth about any financial modeling or valuation modeling topic, to get deeper dives into Excel shortcuts, and to learn more about investment banking in general, uh, visit our website at www.wallstreetprep.com. Okay, let's begin. So what we have here is a simple income statement. And we see we've designated the historical part of the income statement. This is something, these are the results that have already happened. You know, from a formatting perspective, hard coded numbers are formatted blue, formulas and calculations are formatted black. That's a general industry convention. And um, what we need to do is we need to figure out how this company's revenues all the way down in net income are going to be forecast. Notice that some of the line items, formulas are already calculated. We know that regardless of what's actually the, what the revenue or operating expense figures are going to be, for example, operating profit will be calculated the same way it is calculated on a historical basis, which is revenue minus operating expenses. Um, same goes for pre-tax income and net income. Okay, so what we've done right below the historical areas, we've already calculated some of the historical operating statistics. So we can see the revenue growth over the last two periods was 25% and 8% respectively. And then we have operating expense margins, which appear to be deteriorating, or I should say actually operating expenses going down as an improvement, less expense for every dollar sold. And then interest expense is a percent of revenue. There are many different ways to actually forecast interest expense, probably the most robust way is off of a full debt schedule. That's a little beyond the scope of this quick lesson. So what we've done here is simply looked at interest expense as a percent of revenue, and we see that that is declining a little bit as well. And the tax rate is holding fairly steady around 39%. This is all on a historical basis. And now what we've done here is down below, we've got some, some empty, empty areas. So the first is you see the shaded box. This is where we're gonna put in our dropdown menu. But before we do that, let's actually build in some operating assumptions. So I'm gonna split the screen like I've done in some other quick lessons. Alt W S will split the screen. And that enables me to jump using the F6 key back and forth from the top of the screen to the uh, bottom of the screen fairly easily. And so here I am. And what I'm gonna do here is from a forecast perspective, I'm gonna look at sort of what historical revenue growth figures look like. And I'm going to create a best case, a base case, and a weak case for those assumptions. An important part of modeling is actually spending some time trying to understand where these forecasts are going to come from. But for the purposes of this case study, which is us trying to really just understand mechanically how to build these, we're going to just put in some assumptions and just move on. So revenue growth in the last historical period was 8%. Let's just assume that on a best base case scenario, it continues to be, you know, 8% throughout the forecast period. And I'm going to format that blue. I'm using a toolkit called, called the Boost Add-in Toolkit, which enables you to format things automatically based on your preferences. And that toolkit, by the way, can be downloaded from wspanalytics.com. And now I'm going to put some tails around that. So a best case scenario, let's say, is 10%. Let me fill that across. And let's say a weak case would be 6%. Again, actually arriving at these numbers can, can sort of take up a lot of an analyst time. But for our purposes here, we just want to put in some placeholders so we can see how, um, how the numbers play out. Operating expense margins historically were 58.5%. So let's assume that they stay at 58.5% going forward. Again, all of these sort of Excel tricks that you're seeing are done using the Boost Toolkit, which basically lets you attach shortcuts to a whole bunch of common tasks. And then the best case scenario, let's say, Best case scenario, they're at 55%. In other words, they really are able to improve their cost structure down to you know only 55, 55%. In a weak case, their cost structure looks like 62%. Again, I'm just making up numbers here. Okay. And then interest expense is a percentage of revenue. It was 7.4% before, so let's assume that it 
continues at 7.4 percent let's uh assume that the best case scenario is six percent and the weak case scenario is ten percent lastly a tax rate let's say is 39 percent on a best uh, base case on best case let's say it's 38 percent and uh, a weak case is 40 percent Let's fill that through across. Of course, we can have different assumptions during different periods if we wanted to, but here we're just trying to get the mechanics under our belts. Okay. Alrighty, so, so now we have some of these assumptions laid out, and so now the challenge, I'm gonna unsplit the screen here, and now the challenge for us becomes, let's italicize all these, keep the formatting consistent. Now the challenge for us is to really connect that to to this general error, I'm going to move the text box away so it doesn't it doesn't bother us. And um, and so the first thing that we're going to want to do is let's just actually build this drop down menu. And the way you build a drop down menu, which we're not going to connect to anything yet, but we're just going to have a drop down menu here that lets a user select: Do I want to see what the results look like on a best case scenario, base case, or weak case? I have to go into data validation. So with the mouse, you can see where it's located. It's under here. So if you go to data, data validation. You click here, data validation. This is where you need to go to create a drop down menu. There's actually another way to create a drop down menu in Excel, but this is a preferable one, so I don't even want to talk about the other way. So, data validation, the shortcut for that is Alt DL. There's a couple of other shortcuts, but Alt DL is the quickest one. And that pops up that data validation window. And in that data validation window, under settings, if you want a drop down menu, you want to go to list. List tells Excel, I want a drop down menu in the active cell. And in here, you have two options. Either you type in the stuff that you want in the cell. So we're going to do it this way first. We're going to hit OK. And what you'll see is a little drop down icon appears. And if I click the mouse here, I'll see the three options. Without the mouse, if I hit Alt down arrow key I, and then start using the arrow keys, I can select whichever one of these options I want. So let's put the best case, I, uh, the base case, I hit enter and I see it in here. And again, anytime I want to change it, I simply just all down arrow key and hit enter. And so now I have the scenario I want. I also mentioned guys that there's another way to do this. And the other way to do this is to actually go again to alt DL for data validation. And within the source, instead of actually hard coding the stuff you want, imagine if you have, for example, eight cases or seven cases, which is actually surprisingly not that uncommon, you could go in with the arrow keys and select if you have anywhere in the model just the, all the scenarios laid out or any of the text laid out you can just as long as it, it's contiguous you can just grab all of it and hit okay that way there are circumstances in which that approach makes more sense than the first approach and vice versa so i'll leave that for you guys to decide for your own you know whatever you guys are working on yourself so uh, so now we have the scenarios but what we still haven't done and this is the final step and that is to tie the scenario to to the actual model itself right here. So here is, so there's actually two steps here. In general modeling, the best practice is to have the, for forecast, to have the operating assumptions like revenue growth rate and operating expense margins and all these assumptions down below. And then for the main area of the model to sort of reference that and turn that into an explicit uh, forecast. I'll show you what I mean in a second. If, for example, I knew that I wanted the base case revenue growth figure. So what I do is I'd reference into here, right? And then I'd calculate revenue growth based off of that, that assumption. And in fact, let's, let's do that across the board. And then I'll sort of change the operating assumptions here. So if I want operating expense margin, I select base case. And I want interest expenses, a percentage of revenue. I select base case and tax rate, I select base case. Well, all I need to do in that case to finish up the model is to fill that across and to calculate operating expenses at as 58% of my revenue assumption to calculate interest expense as revenues times my interest expenses a percentage of revenue assumption and taxes as pre-tax income times my tax rate assumption. And now I can fill that through to the right and I'm, and I'm effectively done with my model. Now, we're not quite done here because if I change that to best case scenario, nothing happens. And we do want something to change. We, we want all of these numbers to change based on whatever the user selects for his scenario. 
there's actually a couple of ways to do this. There's several ways to do this. And one, some of you may be thinking, probably the most straightforward one is just a whole bunch of if statements in here. In other words, if you know this equals best case, this is not a good way to do it, but I'll, I'll walk you through how, how you would do this. Just so you see, it's probably the most simple one to use. It's not the best one, but it's the simplest one for beginners. If this equals best case, then, then output best case. Otherwise, then you need another if statement that says if this equals base case, then select this one. Otherwise, if it's neither best case or base case, it must be weak case. And we have to make sure that we, in fact, I already screwed up this on. You have to make sure that you are, are very good about closing your parentheses. And that's actually the weakness of these embedded if statements. And even two embedded if statements sometimes can be fairly difficult to sort of think through. Three embedded if statements become virtually impossible. So here you go. Now base case and weak case. Oh, yeah, I screwed up my, my formula. What did I forget? I need, I need my weak case. OK, here we go. So best case works for, for this particular cell, for this one rather, because I only did it on this one. Best case, base case, and weak case. Now, the problem with that, as I already sort of mentioned, is that if statements, if you have five scenarios, which is not uncommon, you're, start, you're starting to look at four embedded if statements. And for those of you who've done a little bit of work in Excel, you know that trying to navigate through embedded if statements is a nightmare. And so we start taking advantage of somewhat more sophisticated Excel functions to do the same thing in a more dynamic and elegant way. And probably the more, more common sort of fix for building scenario analyses is combining two functions the match and the offset function. Um, let me walk you through how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to eliminate the border here, and I'm going to do this across the board for, I'm going to delete these. I'm going to do one, and I'm going to let you guys take a stab at, uh, at the remainder. So I'm going to do offset and match for revenue growth. And I'm going to delete this. Here is offset. And so offset works as follows. Offset says, give me a reference point anywhere in the Excel file, uh, in the Excel model, and output a result that is x rows below that reference point and y columns across. And for our purposes, this height and width parameter is not required. So we really are looking for three parameters. So let's see what I mean by that. Let's get a reference point going. Right now, this won't quite make sense. So give it a, give it a moment. If I wanted, for example, weak case, I want to output something. So I, I just arbitrarily picked a reference point right right above where the three scenarios are and i want to output a result that is one two three rows i'm going to hard code for the moment below that reference point and zero columns across and that'll actually give me that six percent that'll give me six percent if i want to make that two rows it'll give me eight percent and if i want it one row it'll give me ten percent so now the next challenge is to make that dynamic so depending on whatever is selected by the user here, that's how many rows it'll go down. It'll always be zero columns, as it turns out. If I pick my reference point right above where the scenarios are, it'll, you'll always be able to maintain column number of zero. So it's this number that's either one, two, or three that needs to become dynamic based on what the user selected. And for that, we're going to use the match function. And so the match function says, give me a certain lookup value that's going to be this, whatever the user needs to match and match that to its relative position within a given array. Okay, so that's a little bit confusing. But what does it mean? What what is the relative position of the of the phrase or the string we case within this array? Is it position one, two or three? Well, clearly it's three, and that's what this is outputting. The last argument here is it's looking for a match type. A match type, we just, we're looking for an exact match. And so you, in this particular type of scenario analysis, you want an exact match. You don't want Excel to try to find the closest match. And so we type in zero. And once I hit enter here, what I've done is, is really built a dynamic formula, such that if I select this without using an if statement, such that if I select base case, it's 8%. If I select best case, it's 10%. There's one other thing I need to do in order to make this really dynamic, and that is to anchor by hitting F4 the uh, the array, because we never want the array to move. And um, and the um, we don't want to we don't want to anchor the 
C18 because we do want that to move as we copy the cells over. Um, but we do want to anchor the user's drop down menu. So we're going to hit F4 there as well. So I'm going to fill that across and I must have, oh, did I not anchor it? Oh, I anchored the wrong thing. Okay. So I anchored the reference point where I should be anchoring C18. Okay. Alrighty. So now I have this cell complete. And with the file down in this video, you'll see in a little note on top of this video where we started the video, you'll see a URL for where for you where you can download this template and try filling out the rest. In the next video, I'll walk you through the remainder after you've had a chance to struggle with it. But the main takeaway at this point is we now have a model that we can begin to sort of dynamically link scenarios to. And whenever you change your scenarios here, it'll all flow through here without ugly if statements. Okay, we're going to stop right here and come back in the next video and show you how we finish this up.